We're now in the process where we need to do a UV unwrap so that we can apply textures to the object. If you've not done a lot of UV mapping, UV mapping is simply the process of taking a three-dimensional mesh and unwrapping it so it can sit flat within a square space that we call the UV space. Since this is a closed volume, we can't unwrap it until we tell Blender where there are areas that it can detach in order to flatten it out. And there are logical areas in this model. This is very much like patterns for clothing where you've got discrete segments that are flattened out that can then be sewn together to create the three-dimensional clothing. So the first thing that we need to do is let's switch over to the UV editor. I'm going to minimize this for just a minute. We're going to talk about this because Blender's UV editor can be a little bit obtuse if you don't know what's going on. It's got two fundamental modes that we're going to be discussing. But the first thing that we need to do in edge mode is tell Blender where we can split off one section from another using what we call seams. So I'm in edge mode and I'm in edit mode. So let's come in and we're going to, let me come over and turn off subdivision. So we're looking at the base cage mesh. We have these clear regions right here that we already have some weighting applied to. So let's go ahead and use those. We could just double click to select them. And frankly, I could also just do a select crease to select these, but I'm going to go ahead and just do it manually. So we're just going to select all of these so that you can see I've isolated logical sections one from the other bring up the context menu and then we come down to where it says mark seam and there it's given a new color sort of a red color so when we unwrap blender now knows that those are areas that can be cut to create what we call uv islands now that we've gotten that done i'll switch over into face mode that's where i like to default to let's go ahead and apply the symmetry so i'll Press the tab key to leave edit mode, and then we'll come over, click apply to the symmetry modifier. There we go. So when we come back in, we're going to be editing both sides. Okay, now we're in edit mode, but we're not seeing any UV data over here. When you create a mesh, most meshes have some UV data already built into them. So let's talk about the modes here for a minute. This little icon up here is the key to accessing the UV mapper's two primary modes. One of the fundamental differences between these two modes is the actual display of the UVs. When I first started using Blender, I was a little bit mystified by this. When I would come into edit mode, I didn't see any UVs over here. So when we're in the default mode where this little icon is not enabled, you don't see UVs until you have polygons selected. So over here, I'm going to press the A key, and then suddenly we see UVs show up. So these are the default UVs that were built into the mesh, but they're not configured in a way that we can use. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the UV menu, and we're just simply going to unwrap it, and it will use those seams in order to separate these into logical sections. And we also kind of want to think about how it is that we reattach some of these islands together. As you become more familiar with UV mapping, you'll get a sense about where you can apply seams and where you don't need to apply seams. But in this case, I just applied seams to all the logical regions, figuring I could reconnect things once I had them logically laid out in this space. So before we start trying to stitch everything together, let's take a look at what happens when we switch modes here. You're going to note that suddenly everything becomes selected, whereas when we turn it off, we don't have anything selected. But if I come over here in the default mode and click to deselect the 3D polygons, we don't have anything selected in the UV space. But when I come back over here and turn UV sync mode back on, then we do suddenly see all the UVs, even though we don't have polygons selected over here. So this can be a little bit confusing. In a lot of ways, it really kind of comes down to how it is that you want to work with the UV editor. But in the sync mode, let's say that I come over and select this island here, and I do a command or control L 
to select this island, then we can see these polygons selected. Well, this can be really useful in order to work with very complex models where you may want to select, say, a polygon here and see where the relationship is in a complex UV island setup. So it can be really useful to be in sync mode. But one of the differences right out of the bat is how edge mode operates. So for instance, if I come over here into edge mode and I select an edge here, notice that the default behavior is to select corresponding or linked edges on another part of the model. So let's rotate around until we can find that. And it is right here. So in the 3D mesh, this edge, it's a little bit hard to see, corresponds to this edge and this edge. But as soon as I switch over here back over into non-sync mode, an edge isn't an actual polygon selected and so we don't see anything. So this is one of the benefits of being in UV sync mode is it allows you to see edges and their relationships to attached edges and also see where the edge is in the primary model. So let's come over now and let's start stitching some of this together. I'm not meaning this to be for a complete total and encompassing tutorial on the UV mapper, but we've laid just enough of a foundation to understand how it is that we want to operate. So I'm going to come over and select a single polygon in each of these and do a command L to select those islands and then press the G key to kind of move those away and then command L and G key and move this away. We're going to note that one of the interesting functional behaviors that's different in UV sync mode versus the non-sync mode is that if I select a single polygon right here, press the G key, by default sync mode is going to cut it and dissociate it from the rest of the model. Whereas if we come over into non-sync mode, note that it only shows that because we only have one polygon now selected here. So if I press the A key in the 3D editor to reselect everything, if I then come over and select in face mode, this polygon, do you see the connecting lines from this vertex to this vertex? It means they're connected. So if I press the G key and move it, these remain connected to each other. So there are some subtle differences between the two modes and you just have to kind of learn them by working with the UV editor. But we're going to come back over into UV sync mode. Let's continue figuring out how it is that we want to stitch these together. Let's come back over into edge mode. We're in sync and I want to figure out how to attach these. But we really kind of want to see why it is that we want to maybe reattach. So I'm actually going to press the tab key to leave edit mode and we're going to assign the material to this that has that texture. And let's look at this in texture mode so that we can see it. So the texture is applying to each of the regions, but maybe we'd really like it to look like the texture is crawling across the surface in a more logical way. So I'm going to press the tab key and then we can see this in the background. It's actually going to be just a little bit too much. So I'm going to actually just turn that off for right now. That drives me nuts that it does that scale thing. So I think the logical region where I want to attach is here. So this is the benefit of being in UV sync mode is that I can come over here to the 3D modeler and select the element in edge mode that I want to see highlighted over here. And it shows me all of the UV islands that have matched elements. So this here I want to belong over here, so I'm going to come over and select these. But remember, we're in edge mode, so it's going to show us all matched elements. So this is where I need to switch over to face, and then I can work on just this as an island. So I'm going to press the G key to move this over, R key to rotate. I'm holding the control key down to get that 90 degrees. Now I've specifically moved there because the stitch function can actually move islands, but when you manually move things into place, it tends to be a little bit more logical operation. So we'll come over into edge mode. I'm going to select just that edge, double click, so it loops and it gets just sort of the logical loop ends that end right there. So that's a good logical selection. Bring up the context menu, 
and then come down to the bottom where it says stitch and it has now stitched those together. Well, this is great because now we've removed two islands and we allow for the seamless application of the texture, but we have overlapping elements. So we need to figure out now how to fix this area. The UV mapper has some cool functions built into it. So down here, if I select across all of these, these correspond to the bottom area. When we start working with UV mapping, the more islands that you have, the less distortion there's going to be because it's able to unwrap this region with the least amount of distortion. But as soon as you need to start attaching differing regions together, then you may need to introduce a little bit more distortion in order to attach those two regions together. That's exactly what we see here. Well, this region here, which is functioning really quite well, we can use as what we call a pin group. So if I were to come over here and just select right up to about there, we can tell Blender by bringing up the context menu that we want to pin these points. They become red and that tells the unwrapper that it can't change those. Those are exactly the way that they need to be, but that forms a foundation for the unwrap function when we select this entire island, bring up the context menu, and then do unwrap. Then it's only these regions down here that it's able to rerun the unwrap function or, and it removes those overlap. Go ahead now and stitch the other elements together. Let's first come over and unpin all of those points so that we don't we're not dealing with those anymore and in fact you can see we've got pins points that were pinned over there because they were part of the selection because of this matching function because of this uh, uv sync mode so we just need to come in and unpin everything now let's let's figure out where it is how we can get one of these three islands to match up over here, I don't know exactly where these match up. So this is where you come over to the 3D space and just select the edge that you want the texture to become seamless across and Blender figures this out for us. Bring up the context menu and then just do stitch and it moves it down there. But again, we're gonna need to rework this area, but at least it's got the UV polygons and vertices stitched together. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Double click here. We've got those logical matched edges selected and then do stitch. Okay, there we go. So now we need to come over and just re unwrap this in order to remove the distortion. So all we need to do now is since we have symmetry, select this central loop and then we'll pin that. And then we need to switch over. Let's switch over just into face mode because face mode won't show any connected edges. And then we can just come over and unwrap this. There we go. So it's gotten that figured out. But again, remember what it's having to do is it's having to figure out how to connect these and get these polygons to be seamless but it's having to introduce distortion in order to do that. You can see if we look at this from the side, this has more distortion than it does here. So let's see how we can correct this. If I come over, now that it's kind of produced this distortion here, this is where we can start manually taking control and trying to remove some of that. Um, we're in sync mode. And remember, sync mode is always going to try and select corresponding elements that are separated by a seam. So if I come over into edge mode and I double click, we get a corresponding vertex selected there, and that's going to mess things up for us. So this is where we need to switch back over into non-sync mode. Because if we try and scale, for instance, do you see how that vertex at the top the dissociated one is also being considered in the scale function, and I don't want that to happen. So we switch back over into non-sync mode, but again, we have to then specifically select all the polygons, or at least the polygons we want to work on. In this case, selecting them all just works. But now when I come over into, let's do this in vertex mode, when I select these, you don't get the corresponding vertices selected, or the matched vertices. 
Okay, so now I'm going to select this vertex in the middle, do Shift S and a cursor to selected. And you want to make sure, press the period key, that the pivot point is in 2D cursor mode. And then I can reselect this S, X, and 0 to flatten that out. Since those are selected, let's go ahead and pin those and do the same operation on the other side. Shift S, cursor to selected, double click, S, X, and 0. And then pin these points also. Let's zoom out. We've got the central points pinned still, which is good. Let's come over into UV selection mode. You can see even these icons up here change. Now I will point out just briefly that this mode does have a matched selection. They called it shared vertex mode. If you want that to happen in this mode, you can switch over here. But by default, it doesn't behave that way in edge or vertex mode. So let's select all the polygons that we want the unwrap function to work on again. Context menu and then in unwrap. And you see how it kind of gives us a better result right there. So this is the kind of thing that you can do with UVs is you can begin massaging them and adjusting them. Let's come over and do one final operation. I'm going to switch over into front view here and we can see this loop is nice and straight. And I'd really like this one here to not have distortion. So let's double click. Let's go into vertex mode. So we're in non-sync mode. Let's select this single vertex in the middle, shift S, cursor to selected. And now I'm going to double click this loop and we're going to do an S and then Y and then zero to flatten that out. Okay. G, Y, and let's just move that up a little bit like that. Now, uh, since these are selected, let's pin them because those are really the primary points that we want to be flat. So we're going to pin these points, but I need to select everything here and we're going to unpin those because we've got to give it some some regions that that it can work with in order to unwrap actually I, this one here i need to repin there we go okay so now it can work with all of this area in order to remove distortion so we need to come back over into face mode select everything here and then do an unwrap look at that so that works pretty well. I think that's basically about the best solution that we have. This looks pretty good. We don't have the distortion here. We really just need to actually just come in now. I'm going to press the A key and then let's look at this in the top. Press G and this is where you could spend time sort of positioning it to get your texture in sort of the place and position that you want. But I think this works pretty well. So I hope you found this to be useful, you know, just in terms of figuring out how to use the UV mapper. I do think the UV mapper, these two different modes, it is a little bit confusing and it just takes some time working with it to, to you know, figure out the differences between the two modes.